All right, so obviously this isn't the usual video, um, and that's because this week in Hoseki no Kuni in general is pretty big. We got volume 12 that came out pretty recently, uh, today, actually, as well as chapter 103 that is coming out later this week. Um, I'm extremely busy, uh, so this is my accommodations. I just wanted to get this out. We're going to do some uh, a tier list, really simple. You're going to see my face. There's not going to be much editing. I'm just going to show panels as it is. Um, so yeah, obviously these are my opinions and my opinions only. So you can find this uh, tier list yourself in the description down below. I also did a tier list back in the day, almost a year ago when volume 12 originally came out. I don't remember exactly when, but that is in the unlisted. I'll link that as well. Um, so if you wanted a live stream version of it, that's where it is. This is just going to be an updated version of that. All right, let's get started. We've uh, <laughs> we stalled enough. So the basis behind this is these volumes are going to be ranked uh, relative to each other. To some extent, we're going to go off cover design as well as um, the contents of the chapter or the volume itself. So let's start off with volume one, iconic. It's the one that is used with everything, you know. The title for this volume is Searching for Purpose. Uh, let me go ahead and read it out to you. In a world inhabited by crystalline life forms called illustrious, every unique gem must fight uh, for its way of life against the threat of the Lunarians who would turn them into decorations. Phosphophyllite, the most fragile and brittle of, the, of gems, longs to join the battle. When Phos is instead assigned to complete a natural history of their world, it sounds like a dull and pointless task. But this new job brings Phos in contact with Cinnabar, a gem forced to live in isolation. Can Phos's seamlessly mundane assignment lead both Phos and Cinnabar to the, to the fulfillment to the fulfillment that they desire. Praise for the anime. The Land of the Lustrous is a showstopper, a testament to the richness of Haruko Ichikawa's imagination. That's by Manga Bookshelf. So that's what's on the back cover. Um, if you guys know these volumes, you know, this is just the first six chapters of the series. From chapters one through six, volume, or chapter six kind of has my favorite panel uh, not really panel, favorite spread of the entire series. Um, so for that, I love it. But the cover is a little messy. It's a little messy. So for that, I'm going to start off with our <laughs> lowest tier with a B. And uh, likewise, we, since we're talking about the natural historian in general, um, these volumes in their entirety with their contents is going to go way way more in depth um in the natural historian series 2024 anyways volume two we get a the sea theme right here under the sea phosphophyllite is determined to find a less lonely job for the talented cinnabar but with no easy answers to be found on land the quest turns seaward Ventrocasis, the sea snail, suggests that the creatures who live there may have the clue the Foss needs, but the ocean is a dangerous place for this hapless gem. Will <laughs> this sea of possibilities turn into a watery grave? Now, this is the first time. Volume 1 doesn't have it, but here it says that an elegant new action manga for fans of Steven Universe. So we get that uh, right here. Steven Universe little shout out um, again. I haven't seen that. I haven't seen Steven Universe myself So I wouldn't know the cover is pretty nice with the bubbly effects and you can kind of see the effects on the amethyst legs right there and there um, From that one spread in the volume itself. This goes over chapters 7 through 13 which ends on um, the twins and yellow diamond and all that stuff again we're slowly building slowly building um it's a little less messy than volume one but the only reason that i'm gonna actually have this lower which means that to the left of each uh tier list like the each category that means it's closer to being a so volume one right now is 
uh, the closest to being a, this is where volume two is. The only reason volume two is not higher than volume one for me is because volume one is just an icon. Like it's, it is the volume, you know, like that is what everybody sees. So it can't really outpace what volume two's got for it. Yeah. Volume three. Volume 3 is really cool. I love this red. This red that shines completely for it. Of course, it's our Go Ant Artisite, you know. Winter, everything revolving that. It's chapters 14 to 20, which is essentially the entirety of the winter arc. Um, right as they hit spring. Like, this is iconic, to say the least. First big jump up iconic volume this is where the anime kind of hits full strength like insane uh, the anime kind of uses pink as its background um, to show that it's danger and while Ichikawa here uses this red and a little bit of a gradient to the purple ish which works really well um, I think pink is even stronger and she goes stronger with the pink as we get to one of the later volumes um, that pays homage to this just phenomenal you can even see um the little design that red barrel puts on um on and our sites like the inside of the clothing um so let's read it let's read what they say now with new legs phosphophilite is ready to go to battle but when that new strength is needed the most Foss is too scared to use it mortified by this failure Foss undertakes the self-imposed punishment of staying awake all winter while the other gems sleep but winter has its own share of dangers Praise for the manga. The Land of the Lustrous is a showstopper, a testament to the richness of Haruko Ichikawa's imagination. Same thing from Volume 1, that's from uh, the manga's bookshelf. And there is a new one by AIPT. I don't know who they are. The Land of the Lustrous always feels unique and genuine, visually stunning, and the most, tr mm, the most thought-provoking work in the visual medium of 2017 so far. So... This volume in English uh, came out in 2017, uh, right around where the uh, anime came out too, which is awesome, really awesome. Um, I don't really have much to say other than that. Like this volume is great. Uh, it's something I come back to read often. Honestly, instead of reading, I actually rewatch the winter arc in the anime way more. Um, but you know, to each their own. It is great. Now from winter we go to spring like just look at how beautiful uh, I had it upside down look at how beautiful this volume is um, I really like the cyclical kind of nature that they're forming all around all happy and the back actually reminds me of the um, insects and bugs the anthology series that she made prior this feels like an homage to that because you know there's, there's a lot of flowers. Red, bell, red Barrel is also cute. Here we also got Obsidian. You know, we got a little bit of everybody. Um, adorable. Um, let's see. Spring has sprung, and all the other gems are awake to see Fossil of Light's transformation. They're impressed with Foss's new arms, and our hero can hardly stand the newfound popularity, especially when it attracts the scariest gem of all. Bort now wishes to be Foss's partner in battle. It's interesting how... I guess even these volumes, but all the volumes for Land of the Lustres or Hoseki no Kuni, like, they are full spoilers. Like, there's no way around it. Even the descriptions that I'm reading in the back, right, that's also full spoilers. That's just the nature of it. It's a shame that they are, but, I mean, how else would you get these iconic uh, volumes? Like, you can't really show these to a friend and be like, whoa, look at this. Like, uh, for example, volume 12, <laughs> right, like... This is this just has a Foss as a god design, like just on there, right? That's like that's hard to sell to someone. Which like it is what it is, and you know, like no fault to Ichikawa, she can do it how she wants, but it's tough. It's tough to recommend and show these volumes to someone that hasn't read the series. Um, but yeah, Spring is great. 
Um, this is where Shiro and everything is from 21 to 28. I really love this uh, volume cover itself, but I don't find the contents of this as strong as Winter, so it's going to go right behind volume 3. All right, volume 5. One of my favorites. Just because, just look at Ghost here. I love the butterfly motif in general, and it has a such a strong contrast with the maroon-ish things that they have pad in in here. And also, like, you can see that Pad's, um, pad's hair kind of just stretches through the spine to the back here. Um, it's a great mix. Zircon, you know, Foss, yellow, and red. This is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful cover. So, let's see. Let's see what we're talking about. A shadow of a doubt. And we also have the word doubt kind of um, put in the yellow there. All right. Phosphophilite is determined to find the truth about Congo. Oh, they actually use Congo's name as Congo here. That's interesting. Uh, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, we don't actually learn Congo's name until way later, right? To like chapter 64, which is, which is way down here. Um, it is not volume 5. So the fact that we actually get Congo's name in the back, I don't know. That's, <laughs> that's something new that I literally just found out. I usually don't read the descriptions of these. So, um, Despite the other gems' hatred for the Lunarians, Foss tries to get closer to them in an effort to communicate. But the work is dangerous, and Foss realizes this job might be more than one gem can handle. <laughs> Ghost and Cairngorm. Praise for the manga. Uh, it's the same thing from Manga Shelf and the same thing from AIPT. It's a shame that they don't get other quotes. Yo, like, you know, uh, Kodansha, you know, hit me up. Uh, I'll put a quote. <laughs> hit me up. Uh, but this volume in general is where uh, the series kind of ends for the anime. Where they kind of skip around a couple of these and it's the chapter 36. So we're going from 29 to 36. Introduction to Pad Paracha to, um, I guess, the reclamation of Foss's uh, desire to find a new job for Cinnabar, as well as, um, yeah, Ghost. Ghost is appearance. But Ghost Tragedy is not in this one, so that's why we probably don't have Garen Gorm. Um, I love this again with the colors itself. I think the actual content in itself is like uh, whatnot, but like the colors themselves are so strong that it carries over to the S tier. So as you can see, as we're going up and up and up, like these volumes are getting better and better because I mean, Ichikawa is just getting better and better, and we're we're about to hit like so we're about to hit a real good stride. <laughs> like, all right. Also, I actually had a bookmark. I don't know why I, had, I bookmarked this page for Volume 5. Let me check it. Oh, I do know why I bookmarked it. Um, for my print, it looks like there's a, <laughs> there's a real rock. Uh, I, I don't know if you guys can see it, but... Like, I feel like that's an artifact. I don't know how it got there. Um, but it is there, so that's why I have it bookmarked. I probably need to get another volume uh, for volume 5. This is a good reminder. Anyways, volume 6. Volume 6. The fact that Foss uses their gold alloy to form these snow-like flakes is incredible. Absolutely love the design of this. There's, like, it's... <laughs> like Ichikawa is on something. We also get uh, a little little feature of um, some gems that don't get uh, much of a showcase. The back also has the very same quotes like usual. And then let me read it. Give up the ghost. Okay. Fossil for Light has been immobilized in battle, but no one but ghost quartz around for backup. Both must last through the Lunarian's l relentless attack until help arrives, but it's a tall task for this newly minted I like that. Newly minted pair. Will Foss's partner just be another casualty in the ongoing war? Uh, okay. The description for this volume is probably the best that we've gotten for all of them because it just kind of sets up the heights of what volume 5, which the end of 
uh, chapter 36, the new job, is essentially where Foss kind of gets cut in half. Um, so this description for the back, for anybody that picked this up for the first time, incredible. Like, <laughs> actually incredible. And then if we look at the actual chapters, this is where Foss kind of kind of loses their mind. Um, I mean, and you can see it in the character introductions, like, poor Foss. Um, this is chapter 37 to 44 just before a certain uh, certain something happens. Um, th th the stretch of these chapters are crazy, especially when you're reading it for the first time. And imagine that you got to read it in this like physical format. Unbelievable. It's a shame that I didn't get that experience, but um, because of that, I'll have it higher than volume five. Volume 7. Volume 7. This is, without a doubt, my favorite, favorite volume. Just, <laughs> it is insane. I, I don't know how else to put it. Um, also, the fact that you can see the doctor in the back right here where the memories are, incredible. Two heads are better than one. Now that Phosphophyllite's head has been taken to the moon, there's only one way to revive the defeated gem with a risky head transplant. For better or worse, Lapis Lazuli's head is available, but more than half of Foss's original body has been lost. Assuming the transplant even works, will the resulting gem still be Phosphophyllite? Incredible. Now a hit anime. Uh, the the uh, feedback or whatever quotes are the same as usual incredible i mean like there's there's nothing to it like this is top tier top tier um the fact that we get this beautiful lapis and we see the little goal coming off of um Foss's head as well as we see the memory of the dream that happens within uh one of the chapters i think it's chapter 48 or whatever incredible uh, chapter 45 to 52. So this is where right before right before we get to the moon um, I mean, there's there's nothing else to say it like lapis is amazing and uh, this just goes to show it volume 8 So for those that were in the last live stream about a year ago um, I had to pick up this volume just to make sure and look at the colors of this because the colors of this really pop in the physical versus this picture that we have in the uh, in the tier list, and we got we got Foss in a power pose, and all these gems that they're trying to uh, take up. Um, since it has been about four months uh, bef between chapter 102 and 103, I did put out a video, a couple videos focusing on the moon uh, from the Earth to the moon. So. I mean, if you haven't seen them yet, you should definitely check them out. But if you're watching this, um, I'm assuming you have. And we see Foss's new design at full display. Um, we got a new quote. So let me read the new quote. Uh, incredible composition, striking manga art, gorgeous, absorbing, surprisingly emotionally resonant. This is from Tor.com. Hey, shout outs, Tor. Very good. All right, let's let's read the description. The quest for the truth continues as Phosphophyllite finally begins the journey to the moon, hoping to communicate with the Lunarians after many failed attempts. While the gem is shocked and angered to learn that the enemy is able to speak all along, this also means that they can provide answers. Will Foss be able to handle the truth? Okay, not too bad. I really like. Um, I don't know what. I don't know what this tree is. I know that this is a tree that grows in the moon itself. Um, the fact that these gems, um, Watermelon is trying to put a little wraith on Foss, um, is a callback to spring over here, which is uh, essentially a new beginning. So, like, great, great tie-in, great composition, great colors. Um, I don't think the colors are as great as the gold flakes so i'm gonna put it right there um i did post my actual tier list up um on twitter for people to see and there are a couple couple ones especially this next one 
especially this one that people wanted way higher but of course these are just my opinions so if you have it higher like let me know put it in the comments down below let's go to nine volume nine this is also another power pose of Foss and we see the divide as well as a divide here too because we have pad yellow as well as Cairngorm and Cairngorm is the one with the light obviously this light is Enma but um, we actually don't learn Enma's name until uh, this current volume that just got released volume 12 it's uh, literally the description is just broken Phosphophyllite has formed a team of deserters to take back to the moon while there, the gems learn the shattering truth of what happened to their captured comrades. If Foss can help the Lunarians accomplish their ultimate goal, their leader promises to make the gems whole again. But there's a catch. Meanwhile, the Lustrious back on Earth form their own plans. Um, same quote, same everything. This is really good. This is a good description too. Almost on par with, um, almost on par with the this one, Volume Six. Because, like, we get a little bit of a hint, but we don't really get exactly what's going on in this chapter. Um, other than that there's a huge division between them. What I like the most is this character introduction and how Foss is the one trying to sweep them under. And the desaturated colors of these gems. Oh. I did um, make a video long almost years now ago about the mm, what's the right word about the character introductions and i haven't made an updated one for it uh for volume 11 and 12 which i will eventually um i don't know when i'll have time to do it but i do want to make an updated version of that um but the old one is still great um but yeah volume 9 great stuff so this is where I'm actually gonna deviate a little I will put volume 9 up higher as everybody was saying because um, I forgot that that was the character introductions for this volume as well as the things for this chapter is chapter 62 to 70 which Foss goes down they, they get destroyed we actually learn Congo's name so it actually happens in volume 9 so the fact that we see Congo's description in an earlier volume interesting I don't I don't, I don't know what happened there I don't think they should have revealed that they should have said teacher just like in the back of this description for volume 9 they say the Lunarians like their leader because we don't actually know their name um, yeah interesting oh we also get this iconic iconic page so yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna put this up higher um, that chapter chapter 67 I believe is the chapter that made me like on my first read figure out who all these gems were because Karen Gorm's moment was just that like noticeable and iconic almost yeah fantastic <laughs> speaking of fantastic volume 10 Look at this beautiful volume. This is actually insane. And because we have all these Lunarians and cheering and whatnot, it's titled Failure. Absolutely crazy. <laughs> Absolutely crazy. After failing to get Congo to pray for the Lunarians, so this makes sense that we have Congo as their name itself. Um, Phosphophyllite returns to the moon to regroup, but Pad Paracha has been covered in Cinnabar's poison, and Yellow Diamond has taken a severe psychological blow now Foss must come up with a new plan but ideas are in short supply meanwhile Karen Gorm and the other gems are finding life on the moon to be surprisingly agreeable and we see a lot of these gems and what they end up taking up like food for Alex and um, you know scientists for Amethyst with Barbata uh, there's, there's so much so much to nitpick here and obviously they're all celebrating a, a wedding um, for a certain someone maybe not the wedding because um, these petals are also used when Foss brings all these gems back but incredible incredible and this is the end this is where uh, this is where we get to um, chapter 71 to 79 and 79 is when yellow takes their big fall 
um, and we get the 220 years uh, split time skip we get a time skip and we also end on this which is insane <laughs> it's Kyle is just amazing like <laughs> there's nothing else to this uh, I definitely have this higher than volume 9 and then the one that released um, in the middle of hiatus during the year and a half what a what a cover this is also the cover that people use often to say like, oh, who's like Nakuni is is back or whatnot. This is the pink that I was talking about. How it is more of a homage to Volume Three, but the pink really strikes a stronger balance um, and goes more in line with what the anime was doing in terms of danger. Um, we also get so we get Foss and Cinnabar fighting, and we also get Diamond and Bort. Crazy. This one's actually titled Return to Nothingness, which is interesting. 200 years after a failed attack on the Lustrious, Fossophilite is reassembled and tries to get Congo to pray for the Lunarians. This attempt seems likely to succeed and the Lunarians prepare to depart to nothingness, while the gemstones on the moon prepare to be left behind. Meanwhile, Euclid is awakened by a commotion between Foss and Congo. Interesting, interesting, interesting. So, uh, I did do a Twitter thread with the differences between Volume 11 uh, from the official translations as well as uh, the fan translations. This is from Chapter 80 to 88, and there's, there's some really interesting changes uh, that we have here. And 88 is essentially uh, where we left off where Enma is just dropping facts left and right. Talking about a child and all that stuff, like um, how they made Foss into becoming more than human. What is interesting is that the volume 11 for the Japanese, even though the color is the same for the Japanese, there is a special edition that where the pink is just slightly slightly lighter and i love this pink um i love this pink way more than um way more than the pink that they used for the original volume um what's also interesting and i don't think there's a i don't think there's a way to get the shine on but like um all the japanese volumes have like this foil to it which is something that the english volumes don't have which you know <laughs> honestly sucks um but the foil pattern for volume 11 is different it's more very pointy and i don't know if there's a way that i can show this off but for anyone that has that volume 11 like i just noticed it recently when i was looking at the difference between these two you can't even tell that there's a foil unless you put it in a very separate different angle and here we are to the new edition Volume 12, it came out today. Um, I got a chance to interview the official translators for this entire series, uh, the Nibblies. Um, they're the ones that have been doing it since the very beginning. They've also translated a lot of other manga, but of course, for us, it is Hosegano Kuni or Land of the Illustrious. Um, they had already completed the translation for this back in April when I uh, interviewed them, and we're finally getting the full print for it. I read this earlier this morning. It is amazing as usual, and I'll go through the differences later. Um, maybe, maybe on the actual live stream for chapter 103, if people are interested after the fact. But yes, chapter 11, or sorry, chapter 12, prayer. This is uh, a crazy a crazy volume from chapters 89 to 97 or 98 actually um so many things happen in this volume and the reason why this volume has been delayed so long is because chapter 95 was released in 2020 and then chapter 96 was released in 2022 that's why this volume wasn't finished in its content and that's why we got it um Again, absolutely love this new design for Foss, and it's just golden rays for the entire time. Beautiful. So let's let's read the back. Left in pieces, Phosphophilite is on the warpath, determined to make Congo prey at all costs. The other gems attempt to protect their princess, their precious sensei. 
but can they stop the vicious onslaught? Meanwhile, on the moon, Cairngorm demands an explanation from Acmea. Okay, interesting that they go with Acmea here, um, because the first chapter of this volume, um, they reveal his name is actually Enma. And, yeah, I, I think this description kind of summarizes the really, really, like, first couple of chapters for volume 12, but, like, it doesn't explain anything about this design at all, because that happens after chapter 96 and 97, actually, after, during 97 itself, which is at the tail end of the volume. But, yeah, this one is incredible, almost the same feeling as, um, volume 10. But, yeah, that's how many we have right now. Volumes 1 through 12. We'll probably get one, maybe more. Uh, who knows when the series will actually end. But anything from chapter 99 and onwards will get put into volume 13. Now, if you look at the... Let me see if I can angle this. Oh, no, you guys can see it. If you look at the actual thickness of all these volumes, they are about the same. So we will continue to get... Uh, chapters until volume 13 kind of fills up to the same uh, thickness. I know certain volumes, like final volumes, if it is a final volume, tend to be a little bigger or a little smaller, just depending on how the series is. Um, so like Dorohidoro or Attack on Titan, just like naming a few, those have thicker final volumes uh, for this series. So will Hoseki no Kuni get that? Who knows? Um, but yeah. Um, that's all for this video. Again, extremely loose form, but hopefully you got something out of it. Let me know in the comments down below your thoughts as I went over these volumes. And again, this is super, super superficial of like a uh, discussion, and I'll go way, way more in depth of each of these volumes next year. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.